It is now my honor to introduce the governor of the state of West Virginia, Jim Justice, to welcome us to this, the annual meeting and business summit. Governor Justice is a graduate of Marshall University with a master's degree in business administration. Prior to being elected governor, he was the president and CEO of 102 companies. Governor Justice has spent his entire career creating jobs and putting people to work. He joined his family's business in 1976. His farming businesses make him the largest farmer east of the Mississippi River. In 2009, Governor Justice rescued the Greenbrier Resort from bankruptcy. He brought major events to the Greenbrier, such as the PGA Tour, NFL, and NBA training camps. Governor Justice and his wife, Kathy, have been best friends since high school. They have two children, Jay Justice, who runs the Justice Family's Coal and Agricultural Operations, and Dr. Jill Justice, who is the president of the Greenbrier Hotel Corporation and practices medicine at the Greenbrier Clinic. In January 2017, Jim Justice took office as West Virginia's 36th governor. Please stand and join me in welcoming Governor Jim Justice. Well, thank you all so much. I'm going to just pull right over here and talk with you a little while. Because it's easier. It's a lot easier for me to sit with this crazy knee and talk. Uh, first of all, I can never thank you enough and I, you know, you'll find that the one thing I'll always do is I'll always tell you the truth. And I won't blow smoke up anybody's behind because I don't have time for that. You know, um, I think of the wonderful introduction and I think of an incredible speaker just, the, just in front of me. And I'll touch on that in just a second. But I also thank and think of you. You know, you'll hear many, many people say, we appreciate all you do, you're the engines of our success, and you are. You see, I'm not a politician. I've never been a politician, and I don't want to be a politician. I want to be a business guy that came along at maybe the right time and really did everything I could possibly do in my power to turn our state around and get it going the right way. I thank you because you are the engines. You are the ones that really make it go. Now, I don't ever, hardly ever have any notes, but today I just jotted down a few things, and so if I drop them in the floor, somebody run and help me pick them up. But I just, I just was reflecting. I just, you see where I scribbled all this down. I just did this out back. You know, I think about Woody, Woody Williams that just spoke. I think about what an incredible man, what an incredible hero, what an incredible man that is of his age that speaks so eloquently as he does today. Now, but I think this, I think if you listen to his words, he says he wasn't occupied or his people or the people, all the people that were the powers to be politically correct did not register with them. Well, it doesn't register with me either. He also gave you very, very strong words about serving. You see, that's all I've ever wanted. I don't want anything. I have never wanted anything. All I want is to try to make it better. Wanting something for yourself does not qualify as serving in my book. Now, I can tell you this. 
that along the way there's been the mention that this job or these jobs of our political leaders are difficult. And they are. You can catch more vile than you can ever imagine. You know, I would tell all of you that if someone from the Charleston Gazette is looking over your shoulders about what y'all are doing at the Greenbrier, you're in trouble. You better watch them. And I'm only teasing. I'm only teasing. But, but I would just tell you just this, that while it's difficult, those of us that are there to serve, they, they move forward as my dad moved forward. My dad used to always say to me, Jimmy, if you know, and the good Lord knows, that's all that really matters. And oh, how right that he really is. Now, I would just ask you just this, and this is what I jotted down while I was out there. You know, in 2016, when I decided to run, one of the things that happened late in 2016, in June, June the 23rd, we had a catastrophic flood that hit all over our state, but hit big time right here. We hunted bodies for six weeks here. Six weeks later, we found little Michaela Phillips, the 14-year-old girl that had washed miles downstream, and we found her. I've never in my life been through anything as tough as that. This place opened its doors and took in hundreds of people, hundreds and hundreds of people. We did the right thing. The right thing is we moved forward. And then in November, I was elected. And then not long after that, in January, I stood before you with a hatchet and a tackle box at the inauguration. And I said at that time that there was a lady, she was leaning up against the bridge where my grandparents were buried in the cemetery there and had all of her belongings lying down that guardrail of the bridge. And I stopped there as she was selling her stuff. And she had, and, and I gave her $100 for the hatchet and $100 for the tackle box. I put them in my car, and they're in my car right now. They're in my car every day. Because she looked right at me and she said, Mr., you don't have any idea how bad I'm hurting. It's the whole reason that I became governor. It is the whole reason that you do what you do in your greatness for your businesses. Now, along the way, after the inauguration, they hand me a set of books. And they said, Governor, here's where we are. For six straight years, we've had cut budgets. We have an absolute deficit that's beyond belief. In all honesty, Governor, we're bankrupt and nowhere to turn. Now, I ask you this, and I ask myself this often. If at that time, if at that time, and I'm only going to read you just a few things, but if at that time someone would have said, Jim, do you believe, or all of you, do you believe that it is possible, it is possible for today, today, for tourism to be exploding? Our miners are back to work. We've passed a $3 billion road bond. Today, our highways are ranked 16th in the nation, and we've just jumped 20 points. We have helped our veterans. We are now building a monument, a Gold Star Families Monument at the Capitol that Woody referred to as the biggest in the nation, double the biggest in the nation. I went to Barbersville where the veterans were, were at their facility at Barbersville. I asked them, I said, what can I do to help? And they said, we want one thing. Imagine this. Imagine, we want one thing. We want our retirement exempted from tax, state tax. I said, we were in session. I said, well, what do you think that would cost? And they said, well, probably... 2.7 to 3.2 million dollars. 
And I honestly almost cried because I thought, here are these people, my dad, my mom's dad. My mom's dad had three kids in the war at the same time, 10 kids in their family. My dad in the same war, an only child, a captain in the Air Force. They wanted one thing, something that would cost the state three, big, three, three million dollars. They had given every single thing we have to all of us in every way, shape, form, or fashion, and they want a grain of sand. That's who they are. Our veterans, that's who they are. We did it. I told them right then. I would go write the, th write the bill and send it up right then. We had great participation from the House and the Senate, and we pulled it off. Boom. Done. Now, we helped our teachers, the biggest pay raises for our state employees back-to-back -back in the state history. You have a Supreme Court that I was very fortunate to be able to appoint three people that are superstars, and good Lord knows we have got to get them reelected. You know, from the standpoint, you're driving out on the turnpike with an easy pass that's costing nothing, and you're zooming up and down the turnpike instead of stopping and having all that hassle, and the people from out of state thank God, are paying us a lot, lot, lot more money. You have a situation with drugs, it's better. We've still got a long ways to go. We've got Jim's dream now just starting and coming out of the gate, and, we, and it'll help, but there's so much more we've got to do. You've got our Social Security tax now exempted on, our, our, on all of our recipients and as we move forward from the state level, and it's tiered but we're going to get rid of our social security tax on our state, on our state tax to our seniors. You have communities in schools, it's off and going, and Kathy is leading the charge in that, and it's really, really moving, and their success rate is off the chart. We've helped our universities in higher ed. I especially think if you, would, if you would talk to Dr. Gilbert or Dr. Gee, they would tell you all that's going on there. And it's good stuff. We've straightened up and fixed the corrections issue and paid the people what we need to pay them and moved forward. We've really helped our state parks. We've upgraded our state parks. It's absolutely returning us dollars like you can't fathom. And now, of all things, Wilbur Ross. Wilbur Ross announces West Virginia. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? West Virginia, as the number one state in the country, the number one, for crying out loud, we've not been number one at anything except maybe, well, I can't even think what maybe is. Number one in the nation in GDP growth. Number one in the nation in personal income growth. We were number one in the nation in construction jobs. Not too bad. Number two in the nation, 11.5 revenue growth. Not bad. Now, at the end of the day, there's a lot more to do. At the end of the day, if I stood before you with that tackle box, you know, and that hatchet, and someone would have said to me at that time, Jim, this is what's going to happen. I wouldn't have believed it. As positive as I am, I wouldn't have believed it, and there's no way that there's anyone in this room that could believe it. Now, as the Charleston Gazette may report, you know, well, he doesn't stay in the mansion. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Do you have any idea of the work level that it's taken to pull this off? Just because I don't want to glad hand people and take lobbyist money and absolutely and have a party every other night, I want to work. My vehicle right outside, if you, you're welcome to go out there and look at it, it's got 151,970 some miles on it right now. And every mile's been put on that in West Virginia. And I drive. I drive. I pay for my gas. I don't take a salary. I drive. I drive. 
every mile in West Virginia because I believe that I need to be out where the people are addressing the problems and getting it done. Now, I can tell you that President Trump is a real friend and a real friend of our state. And he catches crap a lot of times. And there's a lot of people here that may say, well, you know, justice or, you know, do you really endorse President Trump in, in every way? Well, I do. Now, I would tell you our president gets out there from time to time and I way out on a limb and everything, and he's a lot more boisterous than I am, but I think he's done a terrific job. And not only that, I'm his friend. And I would tell you just this, how often... How often have you sat with someone that is his best friend and just happens to be the absolute leader of the whole free world? It's a real advantage for us. Now, so I would tell you just this. As we continue to move forward, as we continue to go, as I stood there with the hatchet and the tackle box, I would have never in a million years believed that I would run for re-election. But there's a lot more to do. So today, I would tell you just this. One of the things that we almost got done, and I put in my state of the state last year, and we worked hard on it, and we didn't pull it off, is the machinery and inventory tax and we need rid of that. I've got, before I go, I've got to thank Mitch and Roger, the House and the Senate, and all they do. I find it comical at times, and I only just brought this up just the other day, I find it comical at times to see President Trump and Mitch McConnell hacking up with one another a little bit. There's so many similarities between Trump and myself, you know, that, you know, from the standpoint we're business guys, I mean, he, you know, I'm, I'm like way down the food chain as far as comparing myself to the president, but we do have sons that were born on the first, of, of our, our eldest son was born on January 1st, both of them. We absolutely are business guys. We're absolutely successful in lots of things we do. We'll speak our mind. We're not politicians and all that, but the thing that I smile about all the time is when the president is arguing with his Mitch and I'm arguing with my Mitch at the same time. And we both argue like crazy and fight like crazy with our Mitches, but at the end of the day, we love our Mitches and our Mitches are doing great work too. So I'll leave you today with just this. It's been an incredible honor to serve as your governor. I tell you from the very bottom of my heart always that you are the engine. You are the job creators. To make a payroll is tough stuff. If no one's ever done it, they don't have a clue what it's all about. But the other thing I would tell you is this today, having the opportunity to select Select our cabinet secretaries has been a big deal with me, and they've done great, great, great work. Now, today, and this, I'm going to read this because this is, I don't want to screw this up. But you see along the way, as we've created all kinds of different jobs, whether it be, you know, Hino's Expansion or Toyota or Northrop Drummond or this MPLX Gas or on and on and on or we put our coal miners back to work, or tourism exploding, and I just, it just goes on and on and on. You know, I would warn you that we can slip back. We ought to always be on the lookout. Our July numbers didn't come in very good. August is gonna maybe be halfway okay, but it's still struggling a little bit. We've always gotta beware. Today, a lot of coal miners you know, we've had a little downturn in the coal side, a downturn in the gas side. Before you know it, we got to watch. We got to really be business people. We got to watch. And that's what I promise you that I will do. But in addition to that, I want to just tell you this. I want to end on a really positive note and just end with just this. Today, 
we're announcing that I am launching what will be known as a Governor's Downstream Jobs Task Force. Now, basically what this is is just this. The President of the United States just issued an executive order in regard to gas and the petrochemical industry within Appalachia. Now, if you don't believe that that's a reality that is coming our way that is absolutely has potential beyond belief, you're thinking wrong. You're absolutely thinking wrong. That is going to become a reality, and we've surely the goodness got to reelect our president, but that is absolutely going to be a reality. So we need someone to head up this effort that really, really, in addition to all of our commerce people and all the great work that they're doing, we have got to have someone head this up. So today, I am announcing that this task force, now imagine these numbers, these numbers are mind-boggling, will work to bring downstream manufacturing opportunities to West Virginia ahead of this coming expansion in the petrochemical industry. Petro will bring, and this is absolutely coming from the Oval Office, not in a memo. This is coming from discussions from me. Now, the one thing I let off by saying is, I won't tell you anything but the truth. I'll make mistakes, but I'll never tell you anything but the truth. And the truth is just this. We have had discussions, the President and I, $36 billion of, in, of investments, 100,000 new jobs right here in West Virginia, $28 additional billion dollars of economic expansion, and a $2.2 billion in yearly tax income. Today, with great, great, great pride, I am appointing Secretary Caperton, Secretary Austin Caperton, to lead this task force and to take us to where we need to go. So wherever Austin is, if he's here, oh, there he is, we'll stand up and give him the biggest round of applause. I think we need rid of the business and inventory tax before this wave hits. And when this wave hits, trust me, all the other things we have going, we want to keep going, but when this wave hits, absolutely, West Virginia will really go. Today, we've crawling out of a dismal hole, and today we're on the launch pad to take off. Nothing in the world makes me more proud. Nobody in this room can love West Virginia more than me. There's no way. You may love it as much, but you can't love it more. Absolutely, we are the greatest state. We're making it happen. God bless all of you, and thank you so much for having me.